Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 25th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, last night on Reddit, uh, some people did notice that there was a CTX uh, Python package on pip that hadn't been updated in a while but all of a sudden did receive an update ctx is an expansion to the addict the dictionary object and well the addition that was added was a code that exfiltrated your aws credentials at least if you kept them in environment variables which is uh, very common and the exfiltration was pretty simple. It just appended the data to a URL, a base64 encoded it, and then sent it off to antitheftweb.herokuapp.com. So kind of ironically named. And uh, well, next thing, of course, is a quick Google search to figure out uh, what else is connecting to this particular URL. And turns out there was also a PHP package that was updated five days ago. Now, this PHP package was a password hashing package, something that uh, is, I don't think, really maintained anymore, at least that particular package, but hasn't, again, been updated for a while. And what the attacker did here is actually just claimed that they created sort of a fork of the package in order to continue to maintain it. In some ways, actually, they felt a little bit short here. If you think about it, uh, they did backdoor a password hashing package, but again, the only thing they actually exfiltrated were these AWS environment variables and not the passwords that were going to be hashed, at least in the version I looked at. The pip package has since been removed. Last time I checked, the PHP package was still up there, uh, but uh, probably less of a problem, actually, uh, because it's not part of like Pear or one of these big uh, PHP package management systems. Defending against this is uh, pretty difficult. Now, in this case, the attacker also didn't do any obfuscation and such, so it was actually pretty easy to spot the code. If the attacker would have done a little bit more work, it uh, would have been a lot more difficult to figure out what happened. And for all the Zoom users out there, make sure that you are up to date. Uh, late last week, Zoom fixed uh, four different vulnerabilities. Uh, one of these vulnerabilities, an XML uh, parsing problem, and Zoom rated this one as high with a CVSS score of 8.1, can actually be used to ex execute arbitrary code on the client. In order to exploit this, uh, other Zoom user would have to send you a malicious message. So exploitation isn't terribly straightforward, but certainly possible. Last week, VMware patched an authentication bypass vulnerability in VMware Workspace One Access, Identity Manager, and uh, the Realize Automation. And uh, this vulnerability back then received a CVSS score of 9.8. It can be used to essentially uh, take over uh, the affected system. Well, uh, today, the Horizon 3 attack team announced that they are shortly going to release an exploit. So by the time you listen to this, uh, you may already have an exploit for this vulnerability out there. So patching is an absolute must for this vulnerability. Horizon 3 also released uh, the first F5 big IP exploit a couple of weeks ago. So they're certainly to be taken serious. And then we got another set of updates for Cycel's uh, firewalls, access point controllers, and the access points themselves, fixing four vulnerabilities. Now, I don't see any sort of big red flag here. Some of them do allow code execution, but only for authenticated users. There's also a cross-site scripting vulnerability and an authentication bypass vulnerability that sounds kind of interesting, but according uh, to Cycel, it only allows an attacker to downgrade from two-factor authentication to one-factor authentication for the IPsec uh, VPN client. So yes, uh, certainly something you want to address, uh, but uh, nothing that you necessarily have to uh, rush out today. Wait till, well, Friday or probably better, Tuesday. 
And I mentioned the Pwn to Own contest uh, last weekend. Well, turns out that Mozilla Firefox and Thunderbird already released a patch today addressing some of the vulnerabilities that were pointed out as part of the contest. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.